gaskets haven't even been shipped yet. Apparently they're on back order or something. I didn't go into that with him over the phone right now. He offered to bring them by here and meet me and hand them off to me. So I'm going to do that and then get with them about getting my money back. I'm going to order a set off eBay. In the meantime, they'll probably be here by next week. So anyway, we're just waiting for him to get here. He said he'd be here in a couple minutes. There's an adventurous fella right there, checking out what's going on in this big city. <laughs> Standing on a fire plug. He knows how to do it. That's my delivery guy that souped up little fiesta. He just told me they're on special order. They might be here next week. I told him I wanted to get my money back. He says, well, he'll try to get in touch with them. Well, that doesn't have anything to do with it. He just got to tell the owner of the shop that I want my money back. And we'll call it a day. All right, so we're going to move on. Hey, fellas, here you go. I'm getting ready to change that stator out. I'm just showing you what I designed to hold that basket. This is just a piece of pipe I had. I welded that little tab on there so it would hook on that fin right there. And of course, the pipe comes this way. I got a cheater bar on it. And it goes up. There's a cheater bar. And it goes up. And I just got it resting on the frame. You can see that. And, uh,. Those things, per the uh, shop manual, that bolt's supposed to be held on there with 43 foot-pounds of torque. And I would have swore it had a lot more than that on that. Because I had a cheater bar on my wrench, on my ratchet. And, uh, actually had to call my buddy Steve. You saw him in the video from the Neon, the Plymouth. It was him, his son's car. Anyway, he came over and actually broke it free for me. My problem was this kept wobbling out and bending these fins. So I finally took a hammer and pounded that one down against his pipe to help hold that pipe up in there. And of course I can straighten it back out. Because this is just for the pull starter. It doesn't have a whole lot of torque on it. It's only momentary while you're starting it if you choose to use the pull starter. But anyway, I just wanted to show you this so that you all know what I had to go through. And what you'll have to go through when you get ready to change the stator basket on your KLF 185 from 1985 or 6. Alright? Alright. I'm going to bust those nuts loose on there and then we're going to peel that cover out of there. And I'm, The process is we've got to take the reverse switch out. The reverse neutral switch is right here. And remove the reverse locking tab mechanism and spring because the cover will hit that when you try to pull it out and then just loosen the bolts they say put a oil pan underneath it because you're going to lose some engine oil when you do that but I'm going to show you all that as I go I'm just going to loosen up all the bolts first so you'll be seeing that in a few minutes Anyway, here's that tool I told you I made. I just welded a piece of three quarter inch plate to it, notched out a couple pieces so it would fit up in there. And it just hooks on. Sorry. Alright. You can see it just hooks on, catches a tooth there, and keeps that from spinning. They actually require a, they use a factory purchased spanner wrench, but you know, trying to do stuff on the cheap, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. So anyway, I made that. 
and it looks like crap. I had to weld and set it down so I can show you. I had to weld this extra bead on here just so it would have a hook and not slip off of the little tooth. Alright, I just want to share that with you in a little more detail. Alright fellas, you can see that I've taken the neutral and reverse switch loose, the two screws right there. There's a little silver dowel pin right there that I believe that's what grounds you out when you're in those gears. And here's the lever, I already took the bolt out of it. Now you're supposed to take the spring out with it. Which looks just like that. And of course, you know, I've set these somewhere. Set these somewhere so you don't lose them. And I've got all the screws and bolts loose on this thing. But before I go there, I took my Wonder Bar and stuck in behind here and pried this thing a little bit. And it starts inching its way out. It's a little stubborn. You don't want to get too aggressive, you don't want to break this case. You may be going to use the one you've got. So just be persuasive, but not too aggressive. Huh. Which there it is. And there is a little keyway in there. And I mean little. I don't know how well you can see what I'm showing you. But you see it sticking up there. It's very tiny compared to the depth of that slot in there. So I'm going to take care not to lose that. So go ahead and remove these. Taking note of the lengths of them. Those two actually have bolt heads on them and the rest have screw. And I use my impact driver to break them free. And for those of you who don't know what one is, I will show you. This is an impact driver. And what it is, it's a half inch drive with air type impact driver type uh, adapter. And it comes with Phillips and straight slots. You can use sockets on it. And what it does is it's multi-directional. It goes back one way or the other. And you adjust it accordingly. And I always just push it on the ground and push on it. See which way it's going to turn. Once you got it turning the counterclockwise or clockwise, you put it in your screw, whichever one you're going to break free, like so, and you smack it with a hammer, and it will turn just a little bit, and it breaks those kind of bolts and nuts loose. I've been using them on motorcycles ever since I got my first one. I got my first motorcycle in 1976. I bought a, it was a 175 Honda, like CB I believe it was, CB 175, and I thought it was just great. Until I went riding one day with this guy that had a 450. And he took off and just left me sitting still, boy. And I thought, well, what the? I thought I really had something, you know? Turns out I didn't have much. Well, that's a short little rascal there. 
Short, stubby little sucker. I got one more here. And then we're going to proceed to try to get that cover off of there. Now there was a couple of those missing on this. So of course I went to the hardware store and got some. And the heads are not the same. But I want to be able to get this. Now this pigtail is different than the one I just got, so I'm gonna have to cut these wires and solder them together. That is the stator end of business. And this one I'm unplugging here is the charging. Yeah, I forget the proper terms for them, but this one does, the ones with the yellow wires does the charging, and you can test them for continuity. You know, your hot lead on one, negative on the other, make sure you get a circuit. If you got that, it's good. Same with this, but this is promotes your spark without continuity through this side, which is red and black wire. If you don't get continuity through that, you're not going to get spark, and that's why we're doing what I'm doing. So now with those unplugged, got all the bolts out. Got a foot peg off. and an oil pan under it. So I'm going to get my little tapper, tapper hammer and give that a couple light pops. My little leather maul here so I don't damage anything. some of the dust off. And wow. There comes the oil. And boy, I can feel that magnet hanging on. That's how you get that off. And that's what it looks like inside. Someone's had this off before. It's got a uh, RTV silicone all around it. Huh. Alright, so I solder that end on the other one and goes back together. I'm going to check the uh, this right here is your pickup coil. I'm going to check the distance and the gap there uh, while I got it apart. I'll have to look in the manual and see what that gap is supposed to be. That looks Looks to be a pretty good gap to me. All right, so anyway, that's what we're at. This air gap. On this pickup coil right here. Needs to be seven millimeters to 25 millimeters. 0.7 to 0.25 very very thin so I got out my feeder gauge and took my digital calipers and found a six thousandths and I measured that and I got point fifteen I figure that's right in the center of the requirements point zero 0.7 to 0.25 and sure enough that's good I'm happy with that now there is a little tab that sticks up off the top of this that you got to have directly underneath that when you do this I think you can probably see it there in the video if you don't have that there you're going to have a massive gap and you'll never be able to adjust it right but that's what it picks up on and gets a signal from. So seven millimeters to point seven millimeters to point twenty-five millimeters. 
I'm using a .6, which is .15 millimeters. And you convert that over to inches, and it's eight thousandths. Which I know my feeder gauges have got rust on them. They're old. So I'll take that into consideration, but it's not going to affect the outcome. So a six or an eight, either one would be good. Alright, so I'm putting them away. And we're moving on. We know that's acceptable. Alright, so basically now what I gotta do is resign those wires and uh, then put the new one back on.